Then, hey guys, what's up? It's me, Priscilla, and I want to talk to you guys today. People always ask me about what are the best Copic markers to get, and I've, I've explained this in a couple of videos, but I haven't really gotten to depth about it, about what are my five top favorite Copic markers or what should you start out with when it comes to Copic markers. If you're ready to go ahead and make the investment to jump into either Copic markers, Prismacolor markers, or even the Winsor & Newton uh, Pro markers, then it, you were probably wondering where do I even start? I think the best way to start is with these five colors right here and you're probably thinking oh my gosh what is she thinking w1 w3 w5 w7 and then w9 you have a full set of ranging of warms together one they look great together two it teaches you how to layer and experience and you get to experiment with a good set five colors to go ahead and pile on top of one another w1 w3 which is clearly losing ink, which is all right because I have plenty more. Let's see if the other side has good amount of ink. There we go. W5, W7, W8, then W9. 7, W9. So you're probably wondering, okay, why these five? What you can do is you can blend these awesomely together. It gives you this good shading scale, which you really need when it comes to Copic markers. You have to learn to be able to pile on top of each other and put more and more layers on top of each other. And I will go ahead and give you an idea of what a sketch looks like with the, my warm grays. Here are all the warm grays right here. The only one I didn't use on this picture was probably W9. My all-time favorite Copic markers. Every time somebody asks me what should I start off with, I tell them go for the warm grays. And any brand of alcohol-based markers, I tell them go get the warm grays. Here's another doodle that I made with my warm grays. And you can see I did use W9 on, I mean, yes. Yes, I did use W7 and W9, so the really dark parts like you can see on Mary's umbrella. I want to go ahead and at least color in a doodle for you, so let's go ahead and color in this bell. I always start with my W1, and I go for where I know there are shadows, so there's probably shadows all over her face, and I'm just making up a light source right now because I know the lighting is different in the picture, but I want to go around and I want to get those shadows. So I know there's some shadows definitely underneath her chin and in front of her neck, probably wrapping all around. And I'm currently using Bristol board for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and tackle all the areas where I know there are these light shadows. What I want to go around and do is, the thing about al alcohol markers is they're allowed to layer and make the color deeper the more layers you put on top of them. That's why I'm really obsessed with my term, layers on top of layers. So even though I'm going around her trim again and getting those spots I've already colored, it gives me another good darker layer. Instead of going in with my W3 already and layering around it, I can just use my W1 again and go ahead and layer those parts. All right, now I'm gonna go around and start laying down my next level up, which is my W3. And I'm gonna go around and I think I'm gonna do her entire cloak, this shade, and just put in the shadows with my W5 or and W7 later on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the C. It's just a step up, it's not too dark. And the best thing that I can do is when I'm using other W's, instead of you using a colorless blender, I like to use the first shade I have of my set to go in and blend. So I can go on top of where I put my W3 and my W5. Let's go ahead and just grab my W5 and go ahead and shade around her cloak right here. So just a couple of shadows underneath. Warm grays are just so pleasing to look at too because they just, they're warm and a lot of people, I like cool colors because blue is my favorite color, but 
Sometimes looking at warm colors just makes me feel warm inside. And then I'll go back with my W1 and go on top of that and just blend it in and it creates a good smooth layer. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to get start marking off really dark shadows. So I'm going to jump into my W7, W9 and blend once again with my W1. Just blending with the lightest color just so it's, it's better than a colorless blender because it's the same shade as the darker colors that you're using. Alright, so I'm going to just talk you through these last couple of spots. So I tried to go in and I tried to get the darker colors and then I go back to focusing on my shadows with my lightest colors, whether it be me using my W3, my warm gray 3, again and giving it more like layering on top of layering, but I'm, use, I'm mostly using my W5 and W3 for the dress and her cape. So another great tip to have is if you feel that instead of using a W1 to kind of blend all the layers together to give them a nice smooth look instead of it looking a little bit choppy but the thing is you can get away with that with cloth when it comes to clothes because their shadow is a bit choppy but anyways instead of using a W1 to blend those in you could use the next step up so I would use my W5 and my W7, I would use my W3 to blend those together so we still have a nice good dark shadow going on but it just makes it a little bit more smooth. And another thing I love to always give advice on is color in your image and then use your ink because you just don't know if the inking supplies that you're using will mix well with your alcohol based markers because it could smear, so I always save my inking and lining for the very last step. But yes guys, I hope that this was helpful and I truly believe that either you go with your cool grays or your warm grays when it comes to buying your first set of Copic markers or any alcohol based markers, it doesn't matter. I've worked with all different brands when it comes to warm grays or cool grays and they're still my favorite. I will go and buy Prismacolor markers and I will still get those warm grays because I truly think they do enhance your sketches and it gives you a chance to really practice with alcohol based markers. I hope this was helpful and if you have five favorite alcohol based markers leave it down in the comments below and I will see if I can try those out myself. Bye!